Welcome to a loud Saturday morning. Well, that was anticlimactic. Four X fade, cross fade, T12, Quasar tubes. Bam! Um, yesterday, the experience of, I didn't mind shooting little clips on the Galaxy S7, but where it came in to be a problem was afterwards when I wanted to cut it together, I used Adobe Clip and it, the phone could barely handle it. And it's what, it's only a, what, a year old phone, maybe two years now. Um, so in the long run, I had a hard time cutting the clip, the pieces, the, the clips together and then when I went to export, it took forever to export that. I guess it was 15 minutes worth of content, but still, this iPhone 6 Plus would do that pretty quick. And part of that may be the app I'm using. I'm using LumaFusion on the iPhone, which they don't have for Android. There hasn't been a... I haven't found a really good little editor for, the, uh, for Android, which is funny because, you know, I wouldn't expect iPhone or Android to have a quote-unquote really good video editor. It's, I need to take Halloween down. Um, but, so I went and done I went and done it. I wasn't going to, but I ended up getting the iPhone 8, which is what I'm looking at right now. Uh, 8 Plus. Not the X, not the 10, the 8 Plus. I just, I'm not that concerned about having the bleeding edge of the iPhone world. Um, the 8 seems totally fine. I've, I've, so far, I've been enjoying it. It's plenty fast. For this phone, I've, I, now that I've been using the 8, I was I was totally happy with this phone, except for the fact that I accidentally, I think I said this, accidentally installed the latest system, and it slowed down slower than slow. So just through my life, um, I'm doing things, and I'm waiting for stuff to happen on my phone constantly. And you, you just can't. When you use your phone every day, constantly, you can't live like that. So I might just turn this into my shooting slash editing for vlogs device, but I might change my mind after I shoot on this one and then edit and see how quick it <laughs> exports and uploads stuff. Although this isn't too bad. Usually what happens is I go to do it on this as when it was my regular phone, and I then I'd have to wait for it to do its thing before I could use it again because you have to have to leave the app open so I'd have to wait 10 minutes 20 minutes to pick it up to do something and it was usually at night when I want to turn on my audiobook or which I am an audiobook avid fan um I always have my earbuds in people wonder sometimes uh I always have them on me some sort of headphones because um this is my library of audiobooks it just goes and goes and goes. Um, because you never know, you know, when you're doing dishes. I do a lot, of, you know, driving a lot. And you just pop it in. And you can learn stuff. Everything from, like, Star, Star Wars, Total Fantasy to... Not fantasy. Um, whatever that's called. Sci-fi to... Uh, personal development, sales, tactics, whatever. All right. I'm exhausted, but the day is not over yet. I need to put the Ronin on the jib, so I'm gonna try that tonight, make sure I'm ready for next week, because again, Monday's a shoot day instead of a prep day now. I finished the cart, so I'm gonna throw the other monitor on and make sure it works. And uh, if I have any energy left, I'm gonna try and do some editing, so. This is a wider angle lens from the front, but look, so you can see it. Pretty sexy, huh? One, two, two monitors. Like, they fit perfectly. You could stand. If you want, if I raise them up, you could stand and watch them. You can sit and watch them. You can change the angle. Awesome. So, where, how it all shook down was obviously just the uh, modern studio monitor plate on the back. These monitors are almost too heavy for these um, uh, ball socket um, system. I have to really crank it down for it to hold it in place. Although, 
they still work. And then again, it's just that uh, 22 cupo uh, riser system. I have to be careful with this knuckle. You don't want to bump it because it will drop down. Uh, and then I have the other knuckle underneath. And uh, right now that's at the bottom. And then I ended up just using a bracket. Can you see it? Yeah, kind of. Just an L bracket and then uh, screwing to the bottom and the the C stand uh, the bottom riser the junior pin had a had a hole through it so you could put a crate uh, um, cater pin oh, I can I, me and words don't get along most of the time anyway a safety pin through it too so when you, if you want to hang it through a system you can do that in safety and whatnot so it won't, it won't fall through so I just put a bolt through that. And we're in business, so no longer... Oh, now we can have... The director can put his Coke and his coffee, and I'm not worried about him spilling on the monitors. That was always the thing, because the directors... This always turns into, like, the food cart for all, like, the client and the directors, and you come back, and you look at your, <laughs> your cart, and you're like... Okay, so it's much better, much better setup, and quite stoked. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to tip over, because the batteries on the bottom are... What you're just seeing is it move from the wheels... The batteries on the bottom are plenty heavy to give it some anchor. I do need to put some rubber wheels on it, which I kind of made a problem for myself because I made it not easy to access those back wheels. I might have to just saws all the screws off on the bottom when I take the wheels off. And then the, the bigger rubber wheels will have bigger mounting plates, so I might be able to avoid my stand setup. Anyway, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Or I might just put like a base layer of apply on the bottom underneath so that I can go to that and then attach that to the cart. It'll help with stability too. So anyway, quite happy with that. Now on to the jib. Okay, I think I got her set up. We have the Jared's uh, Ursa Pro on here so it's easy access to more buttons instead of having to open the door and get into the menus and whatnot. Um... And the way we've rigged the head is a little funky. So I this Johnny Jib is actually my client's. They had it for some weird, weird reason, but it was in, in kind of in pieces. So I put it back together. It's missing some stuff. It's because of the, um, you know, the octagon or the, yeah, octagon, whatever, uh, or hexagon. Tube construction. It's tougher, it can handle more than my pocket jib. My pocket jib's really just for DSLR stuff, but it's not, th this one is only extended, what, is this like six feet out? I don't know how they measure the jibs nowadays as far as like how high it goes, if they count the whole arm or just where it goes from the pivot out. The um, pocket jib will go from four feet to eight feet, uh, so that's not too bad. But I definitely can't run anything heavy on the eight foot eight foot side of things. So anyway, throwing the Johnny Johnny jib up, I have. Um, we stole the. The ball head plate, the seventy five millimeter ball head plate. Maybe that's maybe that's seventy five. Anyway, um, so I stole it off the pocket jib, just threw it on with some thumb screws and bolts, put the five hundred one head in the bottom, underslung it obviously, and then I have this little. Um, Cine milled uh, Ronin plate that you can stick on a tripod or obviously something like this so you can uh, mount your Ronin on it, which makes it nice. Um, obviously, we're losing a couple feet of height from the Ronin. Um, and, and right now I have 20, I have 30 pounds of weight on the back, which is about right. I need to see about the tension. Because you want to have a nice smooth move. You want to have it like bouncing when you land. So if I'm going to do a move up and down, I don't want to have too much motion. I'll have to see it. It may be loose in the... the uh, there's no drag on this as far as I can see on my middle pivot. So I need to work on that. I don't know. I might go back to the other jib still. But uh, we used the pocket jib last time and it, it just was almost... It almost couldn't handle it. So... I was hoping to use this one again. I just, we, we set it up, I think, last minute and didn't have all the bits and pieces. So the other idea is we're on the K-pod, like I said, the, 
the Kessler K-Pod. I'm going to go up on the top, on top stick on those, so we'll get another couple feet of height, which will be nice. It limits your, you know, it makes the, the legs spread wider, so it limits your, uh, how much you can hide at the jib if you're going to be seeing things, if you go all the way up, point down, whatever. But I know at least, my phone just stopped recording, that was weird. I have it uh, mostly balanced. The reason, one of the reasons I really love the uh, Ronin in, in lieu of, or Gimbal in lieu of, a Steadicam is, man, I hated balancing. I had zero patience for balancing a Steadicam, which is why I hardly ever used it, even though I had one. Um, so I get it close, and I just use the technology for, <laughs> to compensate for my laziness and lack of, of uh, adherence to detail. But anyway, so it's close. It's not perfect. Some people would think it's not perfect, but it's not making any... The motors aren't stressing at all. Um, let's see. When I'm running it, uh, when I look at the app, where is it? You can kind of see. Aha, I almost tricked the phone. So my power and stuff isn't necessarily going crazy. I'm gonna tilt down and see. So the, to keep the camera steady while it's under a load, what am I at, 14? Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad either. And I'm not gonna be doing that the whole time, so. Anyway, we got it all hopefully ready. This the camera's missing the follow focus and cabling, obviously. Um, but she's ready to go to get some nice jibby tilty shots of product. And then it's just operating from either the head or the back and mounting this remote somewhere so we can use the thumb. And the thing will be trying to remember how to do this because it's like playing a video game. Do you do it goofy style, which is, you know, you inverse where you tilt down and it goes up? Or do you do it the other way around and it goes up and it goes up? I can never decide till I get on the set. Okay. I'm pretty confident. I'm going to check out that tilt thing. And I'm going to go to bed because I'm exhausted. So, Okay. One more thing off the list. I'm gonna basically leave this, I can't obviously travel with it built, but I'm gonna leave it as close to built as I can. Wheel it up on the trailer, take the running off, and the camera off, obviously. But hopefully leave it the close to the same configuration so we can show up, we just can set it up and off we go. So, there you go, jib, done. I'm trying to think there's anything else I need to type.